Hi, hi, hello, hello. We have a new chapter of One Punch Man. This is 117. It's called Cornered Rat, which is, uh, you know, a very common idiom that even a lowly mouse or rat or whatever, when pushed into a corner, will become so desperate and so fierce uh, that it actually becomes much scarier when it starts fighting back. <clears throat> So, I'm not quite sure who this is going to refer to. There's quite a lot of fights going on right now. Uh, most recently we saw Nyan, the terrifying cat monster with uh, pretty unfathomable powers still, popping up to the surface and handily dispatching a whole lot of the B and C class heroes gathered there. But there's some even A class heroes there too. <clears throat> Someone pointed out, that uh, Genos, of course, is still on the surface as well. Still bumming around Sai Thomas' place. Could be a good fight for him. He could get jobbed again. I don't know. I wasn't quite sure when they introduced this character uh, that they, they ranked up there with the other uh, monster executives as another dragon level threat. What they were going to do if this was going to be <clears throat> an additional fight within this arc or if this was going to be something they added to seed like a future arc, like another uh, monster that could show up later. Um, it's just sort of like a known entity. But now I'm thinking, yeah, it's probably going to be more the former, and it's going to be giving Genos an opportunity to shine in this arc. Anyway, so this is the ninja girl who was part of the, the Surface team, who we saw revealed in the last chapter. All right, so... Captain Mizuki, grabbing the tail, doing it for the team. <clears throat> With all of their efforts combined, can they take down this one monster? I don't think so. I like uh, her various sports metaphors here. Carrying the baton, the child emperor gave me all the way to the finish line. Hmm. So. <clears throat> He swipes at her, she goes flying, it seems at first, but it looks more like something blocks the attack. But Niana's like a little confused. And then there's this hand, this gloved hand. This is the psychic guy, I think. Because look, Mizuki is caught in midair right before she hits the ground by some psychic energy. This is that low-ranking Esper guy with like the weird helmet, remember? He's still standing too. Yeah, yeah. This guy, he's going at full power. Okay, I really like this because we've got some big, big psychic fights coming up. Um, which I'm sure isn't a surprise even to those of uh, you out there that haven't read the webcomic. <clears throat> Tatsumaki's still around. Gyoro Gyoro. Fubuki's involved herself in this whole thing. And uh, we, we're going to get well-versed in the, uh, the mechanics of psychic energy and, and how all this stuff breaks down. So I think it's really cool that they're emphasizing this here. They're giving us like this description, uh, this depiction of what it looks like when this guy is going all out in his psychic powers. Um, with like this crazy lightning energy and, and these kind of explosions happening around him. And we, we can see like just how much violence he has to, to put himself through, how, how painful this is for him to push himself to this limit. And all of this, I'm saying, is being set up as a contrast for later. And, and this is something that I think the Monster Association arc does really, really well in general, is kind of like establishing like a baseline of heroism or, or monstrosity, and then showing how that escalates with the higher tiers of power. And uh, we've already seen this kind of pattern play out a few times with uh, some of the, the S-Class heroes first beating demon-level threats and then having a lot more trouble with dragon-level threats. Um, so I think it's this kind of pattern. I don't know. I think it's really cool. This pose here is cool, too. I, I don't know. It's something about people like in the grips of their own power. Esper! You're gonna get away from me. After witnessing Lost Lady Tatsumaki's power up close, Ah, so here, see, he's referencing Tatsumaki, and Mizuki earlier referenced uh, Darkshine, right? So again, it's all about the stratification. I think it's so cool. Imaginations beyond my limits started pouring into my brain, but I've got no control over it. Right. But still, if I have to unleash it, 
I have to unleash it even if it means sacrifices my own life. Pretty cool. But I think it might amount to nothing. Okay. This is a pretty amazing shot. Okay, so this is actually cool. Like, his all-out attack, after being inspired by Tatsumaki, is actually quite devastating. He's shattering all of these apartment blocks. It's pretty amazing. I like this idea, too, that when he saw Tatsumaki, it wasn't like a conscious decision of like, oh, I'm so inspired, I can see now, there's still so much potential in my psychic power, I'm going to work really hard. But more that uncontrollably, these, like, fantasies of power just poured into his imagination, as he puts it. Like, that he, he couldn't help himself from, like, the, those ideas, like, running wild in his brain. I, I like that. that. That has, like, a good kind of feverish intensity to it. <clears throat> this is a really cool shot. They're, they're really giving a lot of respect to some of these random-ass B and A class heroes that weren't really a major plot point at all in the original. So this is a very Tatsumaki-esque attack. Or I guess more kind of like Fubuki. Fubuki's always doing this one, throwing pebbles at you. But uh, this is impressive. The way that all of the shards are like jagged and, and pointed right at Nyan, all oriented like that. This is an impressive attack. Slams it onto them. Captain Mizuki and a cartwheeling out of the way. Completely freaking out. Woo! Wow! To the extent that Fubuki, who's still hanging out with uh, Bang and Boom down in the, the caverns, detected it and thought it was her sister. Very impressive. That's really, really impressive. Good job. Look at that. So this is really cool, you know? Like, this guy, again, you kind of just thought he was going to be, like, the lower tier setting up this stratification. But they, they are really willing to kind of bust out of those designations with some of these depictions. Like, not that I think this actually works against Nyan. I think Nyan is going to just slither and slide out of these crevices in an instant. And they'll be back in trouble. It was very dangerous. His uh, helmet explodes here. And this is very interesting. There's like stitches running across the bridge of his nose. You know? So there's some past here. Something was maybe done to him. Something he survived a long time ago. Or maybe it was some unrelated trauma caused the psychic powers to activate. And maybe this was even explained when these characters were introduced, but I, I can't hold all of that in my memory, unfortunately. But that's a neat little detail, an intriguing little detail that might be an Easter egg to some plot point we were already told about, or could hint at some plot point in the future. Who knows? I don't know. Did it. Hi, I'm safe. We wake up flattened. Oh no. Don't you know what pride cometh before? Oh no. Oh, this is such an eerie shot. The way that the cat emerges. The cat came back. Maybe that's the joke here. Remember that song? The cat came back the very next day. We thought he was gone, but the cat came back just to stay away. Yeah, so the cat came back. It looks so alien here. So unnerving. I, I, I don't know. I love cats. I think we talked about this last chapter. I love cats. I think cats are so cute. I love cats as, like, kind of obtuse things, as, as things that get in the way, you know? But then there's also the conception of cat as, like, very sleek, very stealthy. Um, <clears throat> and, and I think that's pretty cool, too. The fact that Cat's behaviors can be so kind of unnervingly silent and precise that they become alien to us, that we, we can't really comprehend them the way we comprehend other things that move around, other human, earthly creatures. 
Whoa. Look at this shot. That this hero is slashed. You know, normally they do the, the convention of like thing kind of teleports. It's like standing here. And then it's just kind of like making casual conversation. Oh, it's making casual conversation over here. And then poor victim somewhere between these two things gets slashed. You know, and that's a pretty cool depiction of speed. That one uh, is a classic for a reason. But this is like next level. That he's just standing here the whole time, you know, bent over in this kind of awkward pose, chatting with the uh, the poor son of the monsters executive, the, the asshole son. And then without coming out of that pose, the other guy gets slashed. He's just, it's not from A to B someone gets slashed. It's just still at A. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Hmm. Whoa, he peed his pants. Oh my gosh. All right, so he hauls them off. Still taking his time, not just cutting them up now. Giving enough time for a hero to appear, perhaps. Oh, a shield or something. Flying in. Some big pizza. Hmm. Oh? The pizza flies around. These spikes start popping out of it, protruding and spinning. Very powerful looking weapon. Now, to me, this kind of looks a little like the hallmarks of Drive Night. Like this kind of transforming mechanical substance. But Drive Knight seems like he's kind of out of commission for this arc. I'd be surprised if he showed up. So I think this has got to be our boy Genos. Or or not, never mind. As soon as I scroll down, I think it is Drive Knight, because it's turning into this box. And this is the box that Drive Knight has used before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And S-Class has appeared. An S-Class that we really don't know very much about. Power level has always been quite mysterious. Um, he had made that one statement to Genos. Metal Knight is the enemy. So this has extremely complex uh, implications about what Drive Knight knows, where his sympathies lie, what his own motivations and, and quests are. Um, so it's like, are we to kind of take that at face value? I kind of think so, right? Like, wh why, why would the plot point be Oh, <laughs> Drive Knight lied to Genos for no reason. And then, like, ten years later, we found out that he lied to Genos. And then Metal Knight isn't the enemy. That would just kind of feel flattening and disappointing. I don't know. So I think he's a legit good guy. He might actually be extremely strong. And he seems to know a lot about these, like, robo-politics. Of all these professors and their creations and the secret wars between them. S class hero. Okay, so this hero that was attacked is shouting out run. Who's he telling to run? The kid, I guess? Knowing that Drive Knight is going to be able to protect him, so he should at least just try to get out of there. Was he trying to tell Drive Knight to run? To run away from, from Yan? Let's go with Drive Knight. You should have a little more faith in your S class. All right, so his confidence instantly restored. The stupid kid runs off again. So Drive Knight, again, he had been trying to torture uh, Monster Association members to get more information. I guess that's what he's been doing this whole time. Tactical transformation Lance. OK, this is so exciting. <laughs> We've only seen him transform like once this entire time. It was pretty badass. And who knows how many we're going to get in this fight. The fact that they're starting off with the transformation is so sweet. Or, okay, so the transformation is going to happen like real time as he attacks him. Jumps towards Nyan. The, the crazy technology is like swirling up around him. S-Class heroes. What a bunch of weirdos. You said it. Ah! Alright, that's it. Okay. 
Uh, ooh, a really amazing animation of the Genos versus Garo fight. Okay, I think I'll check that out. That sounds like fun. Good chapter. Too short, of course. Too short, too short. But they're coming out with some fantastic level of consistency here. So it won't be that long away until a long await until we get another one. So much stuff going on in this arc. So much to do. I love it. Okay. I'll see you next time there's a chapter. Bye-bye.